Right, okay guys, I'm up in my garden next to my big water barrel here, which I get all my live food from, my Daphnia, and some little scuds whizzing around in there as well. Little seed shrimp looking dudes. So we're gonna hook a few of those out and put them in a pot. You can probably, I don't know if you can see them, but you, they're all around the outside. Sorry, around the inside. I'm not sure if you can see them on the outside there. Right on that side. All the way down what we're going to do is we're just going to, have to scoop the net in now disturb them off the surface and i'll just keep swinging the net around after they just dis dislodge from the outside and then we'll bring it to the surface and look at that lot absolutely hundreds of them in there little daphnia and we're going to take them back and we're going to feed some of them to, oops sorry to the ember tetras so i'll just take them out i've got some little bucket of water here ready i'm just going to invert the net drop the net in give it a wiggle around upside down and then put the net back in give that a little wash around sorry i want to do two things at once here shake that off and i'll give you a little little look at these guys look at that hundreds and hundreds of little daphnia in there and we're going to go and put some of these into the tank yeah, just been up in the garden, been up to my big water, but just getting around this time of the year now with the Daphnia start to breed. And um, here's a load of them I've just got. This is the sort of stuff that I've been feeding to the little ember tetras to get them into breeding condition. So hopefully we'll have a little bit of spawning activity this morning. Right, okay guys, what I've done now, is, I've, as you see, I've just been up in the garden, I've got my Daphnia out of my big blue water bat vat out there bat i'm losing it and we're gonna now we're gonna stick some of these in the morning now this is first thing in the morning okay lights have just come on clownfish next door are all busy waiting for their food too but because the lights are on they're still a little bit dormant so i'm gonna suck up some of these little guys here which are in the pot probably see them all in there and we're going to introduce a load of these into the tank suck a few up and we'll just lift the lid up carefully and squash them in and they should see them start to start to filter off down through the water column in a minute and they should start coming out with a bit of luck see them and start feeding on them so here they come they're starting to dive out the top there you can see but now we're just going to watch them for a bit there's a female at the front there. There's these little white seed shrimp or scuds and they're feeding on those, but they don't tend to like them as much as the Daphnia. They're, they're picking out all the Daphnia first, which are the smaller pinker ones. And they're leaving the other ones, which look like grains of salt, going to the bottom. Now you can see them buzzing about, starting to wake up a little bit. And with a bit of luck, we'll have some spawning action. But with these smaller tetras, like I've showed you in other videos, sometimes it's just real is potluck that you film these guys spawning. Now I've got a lot of java fern in there and most likely they're going to go in amongst it and spawn in amongst it or around the back out the way or by the heater is a favourite place for them to spawn as well. So we might not get any spawning action or see it but I can, I've got a better view than you guys so I can see there's a couple right at the back on the right hand side there you can just see, I'll get my get my tongs which might help there's a couple up in that corner up there which look like there might be a little bit of action going on they soon have gobbled those little guys up I might put a few more of those in I think bear with me a second got to do this very very carefully lifting the lid I've got a big glass lid on the top of here so Put a few more of these little chaps in, keep them, keep them busy, and then we can see what goes on. Carefully lower the lid. Right, now let's see what happens here. You still see them picking them off on the side. There's a few more, there's a couple of little males coming out there. And with a bit of luck, we might see some action. And I normally find it's this first thing in the morning that triggers them off, like you've seen in so many other of my breeding fish videos now you see they're getting a little bit more active now this is what i wanted to see 
and you'll find they'll have a little belly full of food and then they'll shoot off behind a little shake together like they do releasing the eggs and the sperm together and those little eggs then will fall in amongst those java ferns and hopefully sit there nice and quiet for 24 hours before they hatch out I'll show you the infusoria culture in a minute as well we've got that that's that's worked perfectly um, I'll go we'll go in the living room in a minute and see what's going on there but I can't see anything happening yet they're going down the bottom there by the filter and this is the action you want to see it's that quick darting ah now I don't know if you saw that but down the right hand side there there were two went up under that leaf and came together very very quickly it is so hard to see I really do like catching them on film for you but sometimes it's just not possible you just can't do it they like their privacy and they go away they don't want to be laying those eggs out in the open where the other fish can see it because as soon as they do those other the other uh, embers will eat them so they tend to go quickly in and hide you see they're calming down a little bit now coupled no you have to keep your eyes peeled Here they come again. It is so difficult. I just like I, I like to see them come together because it's proof to you guys that they're actually coming together and spawning, and you can see the action. So you know what to look for when when yours do it. But this live food is the key. It really is with with most of these little tetras. They really do like that live food, and it's so important to give them that infusoria when they when they first hatch like I've said on my other videos as well it's, it's the easy part is breeding the fish it's getting the young through that first very very small stage which is the hard bit they'll do it naturally they'll lay the eggs quite naturally but then it's bringing them up there's a little one up the back there going racing around up and down and if you can see him come on you guys help me out Well, I put those two at the top there, we're going to go then. But this is what they do. They just go round and round and suddenly they'll just come together and, out and, and there you go. And sometimes you see the eggs drop and sometimes you don't. They're not big egg releases, they'll lay a few at a time for about an hour I would say. And then they'll go quiet and they'll do the same following morning but that protein that you're feeding them blood worms are good too the small blood worms not those big guys mosquito larvae it's not that time of year yet here but the old daphnia they're always out and about up in my big water vat in the back what I do there is I stick a load of leaves in there I've got a load of oak leaves and I chuck loads of those in and then they'll just start breeding eating that decaying leaf matter in the water and they'll go ballistic in there which in a couple of months time the water will be red with them up in there there'll be so many but there's always some in there how many little guys I think they might be going if they're going to be doing anything it's behind that leaf right at the back there by the heat you can see where they keep going behind the leaves that was a little practice session there just bumping together let's see right that little there's one right in the top there which just he's flicking his fins I don't even know if you can see that one there he is there right at the top just off centre that female up there she was twitching her fins away then going behind that leaf and a little male just crept in there with her but I think that's where they're spawning actually, that's what they're going in there up around the back. I've got to keep super still as well because any movement is going to put them off so I'm staying quite still, hiding behind the camera here so. But I think that's where they're going, I'll try and get some, some footage of them actually spawning but 
if I can't, I can't, but I I know I've seen a couple of comings together, which is good. They're going beyond the leaves now at the back. I think that's what they're doing. They're just going out of sight. Now, like I said be, before in other videos, like with, like with the neons and things, where you can just put that clump of moss in the bottom and they'll go over the top and they'll just come together like you've seen in that video and they'll drop those eggs into the moss and they hide out the way and then you just remove the adults. But with these, you can do that with these, but I find these are a lot more finicky and a lot more nervous little fish than neons. And they tend to spawn better when they're in, when they've got more um, vegetation in the, in, the, in the tank. So they've got more, a bit, little bit more privacy. Oh, there was the one that just come together on the, on the right hand side there. Just that little wriggle, you saw him come together there. You might have to rewind that if you didn't see it. But hopefully we've got some eggs in amongst there, but I think what I'll do is I'll actually give them another hour and then I'm gonna take them out and put them back into my bigger tank. And then we'll leave this then for 24 hours to see how many we get out, which will be interesting. I don't think it'll be many, but we don't want thousands of them. We just wanna bring a couple few through so we can put them back in a tank. Instead of buying some more, just breed some more. That's the way I look at it. And it's great fun doing it in the process, so. Okay, let's go and have a look at that infusoria culture now. Right, we're in the living room. Now there's the old infusoria culture. Now we've still got that in there. Now if you notice, the water's gone clear. It did go quite milky, like it normally does. And I've added a little piece of moss in there as well but if we zoom in closer to the surface because they always go for the light you'll see millions and millions of those little guys look at that you can see them all moving let me try and get you a clearer picture but there is absolutely thousands and millions and thousands in there and that is your first food guys okay that's what you want and they'll be absolutely teeming with them and all you do is you just put your pipette in suck a few of those out and then just put them into your tank. And those little guys, once they're free swimming, they'll soon find them. Look at that. Absolutely alive with them. Now, some of you guys have trouble with these. You've got to keep them, the temperature has got to be a little bit warm in the house. I wouldn't put them outside. In the summer, you can do it and leave them outside. That's fine. But with it being, um... oh, that's a bit better. Look at that. Absolutely millions of them in there. Um... And they're eating all that bacteria and stings in the water now. That's why they're prolifically breeding. But be patient with this, guys. You've got to be patient with it. When it looks like it's gone all milky, leave it. And then before you know it, it'll all clear up like that. A um, piece of moss from the garden is covered in these things. So just drop a little bit of that in there. And that will that will seed it for you, okay? So there's your infusoria culture ready. We need some fry now. And after we've got the fry, then we can start rearing them up. Right, okay guys, it's, well it's over 24 hours now, but we've got a few little guys out. There's one up on the glass on the side. Very hard. We've got a couple free swimming. If I can find them, I'll try and show you. Ah, you can try and see, these are absolutely super small, but if you look right in the centre of the screen there now, by the cable, you can see a little baby one zipping about there going backwards and forwards and there's another one on the back just up there on the black if you have a look you can just see two little glowing eyes there but we've got a couple of babies so we've got three out so far probably a couple more hiding oh there's one right in the front of the glass there look right in the centre another little guy stuck there as well so now it's time to put the infusoria into the tank. Right, now I've just taken that big 50ml syringe there and I've just sucked some out. I'll put a torch by the side of it. You might be able to see them. Maybe it might be a little bit too bright. But there they are. Look at that. Thousands upon thousands of little infusoria. All whizzing about. And that's going to be the, the first food for them, okay? So I'm going to put that in now. Turn this torch off. Just going to have to put you down a minute there while I do this. I'm sorry if it's gone all black. 
I'll be back with you in a second. I'm just squeezing them into the tank and they're going to carry on living in there. Right, I've just squirted them in. You can see the remnants of the bubbles just going up there. But that's fantastic, that is. I can't see any more. We've got one over on the glass there, like I said. We've got one up there. It's two. They've still got that little free swimmer there somewhere. Where are you? But you can see all this micro life now in the tank. And that's going to be feeding these little babies. And there's the other one right there. They tend to do this. They tend to hang on the glass or they'll zip around and then they'll have a little break. They'll stick on a leaf or on the ground. There's that little guy there. Let me try and zoom in a bit. Where are you? So hard to see them this size. They're super small. There he is. Little zipper there. Fantastic stuff. Obviously I've taken the parents out to let these guys hatch out. As you can see it might have been, you can see things have moved around slightly. But the eggs drop in amongst all this media and the leaves. But it's a good little way to breed Ember Tetras. I'll keep you on the in the loop on how these guys progress over time like I do. I think there might be another one there for swimming. There's not that, that many. We may have up to maybe 10, maybe 15 if we're lucky, get a couple through. That'll be nice, but it's great fun for you guys to copy and replicate if you want to have a go at this. You've got to be patient sometimes with different ones. I keep all this in my workshop, so if you've got a fish room, it's going to work better for you because you can stay out and keep a lot quieter where you are and obviously you're not going to have traffic like cats jumping up and watching the things tapping on the tank your kids looking in the tank or tapping on it or anything like that so they're not going to be as um as spooked as if they were in your living room or anywhere else but it's a great little job to do if you've got an office tank you could do it in there because that's going to be nice and quiet where you're doing your work and stuff or if you're in uni or anything like that you can have a little tank grab some of these grab two little pets at home breeding tanks they're only about 20 pound each i think nice little lids i think they come with filters and things like that so you can always give them a go but i'll give you a little update guys on these when they're a little bit bigger and they start to look like ember tetras okay anyway i hope you like part three um i'm going to put them all in a playlist so you just have to look for it in my playlists and there's one two and three all the way through to this stage okay where we're putting in the infusoria and we're feeding them up and hopefully like you say and give it a, give it a few weeks down we can have some and i'll make another little video but for me and that little guy swimming right in the middle of the screen there up by the pipe you see him just darting forwards he'll be he'll be munching down on that infusoria now as it goes gliding past and getting bigger anyway guys as always lovely loads take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now.